Grimites. Are you thinking about going live on Twitch? Have you started live streaming on Twitch recently and you're not sure if you set up your account right? In this video, I will guide you through how to set up your account on Twitch properly to make sure that you have all the information you need to go live today. Before we go into detail, I recommend to use a PC, a laptop, or enable desktop website on your mo mobile phone, smartphone, to make sure that you can follow along. Now, without wasting any more time, let's go into it. All right, first things first, if you look at the top of the page on the right hand inside, you should see an avatar. If you don't, Twitch may prompt you to log in. If you haven't done so yet, please log in. Now, by clicking on the avatar, you will have the drop down. First tab that we're gonna go and have a look is the settings. So click on settings, profile. This is where you add your profile picture, your profile banner, which is the image that will be on top of your channel. Then you can set up your username, display name. I highly recommend to add the bio. Um, as you may notice, this is my bot account. <laughs> um, but you can type something like, um, I don't know, I am, I am a live, I am a live streamer. Or something about you. And then make sure that you save the changes. Now, below that, please do not touch it. Because <laughs> if you do, Twitch will disable your account. So let's scroll up again. We go into the tab Prime Gaming. Now, if you have... Amazon Prime, I highly recommend to connect your Amazon Prime account with Twitch because it will enable you once a month for free to give a Taiwan subscription to the streamer that you like the most on Twitch. And also it gives you loots and uh, um, stuff in games, a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Now, channel videos, we're not gonna touch it just yet. Uh, we'll go through the channel dashboard. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Now, security and privacy, this is where you change your email or update your email. Uh, you can turn on and off, enable additional account creations. Um, at the top of my head, you can create, I think three accounts with the same email address. I prefer to keep them separate, uh, my board account and my main account. If you're happy to keep it on the same account, you can just use the same email. You just have to toggle on additional Twitch account can be created using this verified email address, and then you create your board account. Now, security, two-factor identification, you do want to set it up, A, because it's more secure, if you get to the monetization side of Twitch, so if you meet requirements and you access monetization, in order to sign the affiliate contract and partner contract, you have to enable two-factor identification. So since we are setting up the account now, might as well do it. And if you see strange emails or uh, strange things happening, um, on other websites where you logged in with Twitch, with one button, you can sign out everywhere, which is here. Um, you can block users by username. So if you know usernames, you can just pop them in here, or you can directly do it from your chat. Stories mentioned, I will leave everything as default on everything else on this page. At the bottom of the page, you have a button that you can use to request all your data from Twitch. Notifications, I just do smart notifications and Twitch does it. It's, it's not very invasive anyway. Connections, this is a really important tab. I will recommend to connect Steam, Twitter if you want to, Riot Games and Ubisoft, because it will give you in-game loot 
and Twitter, I, I think it posts when you go live. I'm not entirely sure because I've never used it, but I would not recommend to connect YouTube and TikTok for the simple reason that yes, it's true. If you connect them, you can export your stuff, your clips, uh, your live stream directly on those two platforms. But I will not connect them because you want to edit them first. Why do you want to edit them? Because you can take your content to the next level with stickers, with subtitles, and so on. Recommendations, I will leave it as it is. Usually it's empty. The second part of the video will be related to the creator dashboard. This is a very important place when you can manage all the side of your streams. So we go back on the top on the avatar, we click on the avatar, drop down, and we go create a dashboard. At the top left hand side, you have the hamburger menu. It will be open or closed, but if it's closed, just click on the hamburger menu. Home, just give you an overall look of the new features of Twitch. Stream manager, this is very, very important. Top panel, it shows you the session. So if you're live, it will tell you how long you've been live for. How many viewers, how many followers you have in total on your channel and your bit rate. So the quality of each stream that is going to Twitch. You can see a stream preview. If you're offline, you will see the offline banner. We will see that in a minute. And then you can see the activity feed, your chat and your quick actions. Quick actions can be organized by three dots and then edit quick actions and you can select them from the bottom row you will have a lot more functionality once you get some other streaming tools that we'll talk about in a minute but yeah you can select more and they will be added or deleted from um, the quick action tab next alerts those alerts are inbuilt on twitch you can simply create an award from from the right hand inside it's really easy to do it you can do layout you can add the drop shadow if you want to uh you can do text to speech i'm not gonna go into detail because there are a lot better services than this yes it is inbuilt into twitch but when in regards to bot services and alerts there are a lot of other platforms like Streamerbot, Mix It Up, Stream Element, Stream Labs. You want to put it on on it as well. They are much much better than this, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Next tab, Analytics. I won't go too much in detail about Analytics. If you want, I can make a video out of it, but you won't be needed when you first start because it gives you basically the statistics of your channel and of your live streams. So how many people popped in um, and when you monetize as well, how much money you make and so on. So we're not gonna touch it just yet because if you haven't started streaming yet, most likely you won't have anything in it anyway. Next tab is community, roles manager. It's really important if if you first start most likely this will be empty like it is for my board account so just go add role so you can search for example what goes youtube which is my other account you select it and then you can choose if you put it as a moderator artist or editor and I put myself as artist and moderator. Not that changes anything because I don't stream on this uh, account. But you select the roles that you want to add. And then you save it. And that's how you assign roles to viewers. Activity. This will show you all the changes that have been made to the account. Mostly by you. Follower list, you will be able to see all your followers. Next tab is content. Video producer, it shows you all the VODs, so basically all the live streams that you've done, depending on the monetization level that you're on. 
But let's just say, for argument's sake, you haven't monetized yet. So most likely it's going to be seven or 15 days. So you will see all your live stream recorded for seven or 15 days yet. Then a collection is where you can make collection of your clips or of your live streams, if they're still available. Then clips, this is where all your clips that you create or your community creates about your content will appear here. Do not quote me on this, but I don't think clips as an expiration date because on my channel, I still have clips that I made two years ago. So I think because they don't take much space and not many people do clips, um, Twitch is still allowing all live streamers to keep their clips, basically. Copyright Claims Manager. You want to make sure that this page is always empty. <laughs> if there is something, you're in trouble, okay? Um, and that goes about copyright music that you may use it on stream or copyrighted videos, um, like something from TV or someone that owns the content that you're, made, that you're showing that is not basically yours. Um, so make sure that you stick to royalty-free music, royalty-free videos, royalty-free images, so no one can come after you. Next tab is settings. We have stream. This is where you find your stream key. I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of people that popped in on stream and asked me, how do I find the stream key on the Twitch account? This is where you find it. So you go create a dashboard, settings, and then you go into stream key, stream. So you have your stream key, keep the latency mode to low latency, and copyright audio warnings. You want to keep that on. Store past broadcast. There you go. Seven days, unless you're affiliate that is 14. 60 for partners, Turbo, and Prime users. So there you go. Seven days of saving past broadcast for streamers, 14 for affiliates, and 60 for partners. You can turn it off and turn it on. It's a turn off by default. Mostly if you don't have any content on your channel, you do want to turn it on. Yes, I know a lot of people that disable their past broadcast because they play copyrighted content. What I would recommend is just stay away from copyrighted content in general. A, because it's wrong on so many levels. Because how would you feel if someone will use your stuff, stuff that you make, without giving you credits, right? It's not right. But also on the fact that, yes, Twitch is not be actively banning live streamers. They have copyrighted content on their live stream that is not recorded. Sooner or later, Twitch will catch up. So everyone rushing to copyright free music, just do the right thing from the start and you'll be golden. Enable clips, yes, you do want to toggle it on uh, so you can create clips and your viewers can create clips of your content as well. Now next is follower only and subscriber only. I will keep it off because why would you limit your exposure just so you can select it for the two or three subscribers that you have. If you have any, just keep it there for everyone. Feature this clip setting, you want to keep it on. Just in case for one remote reason, Twitch decided to add your clip to the feature clips. It's more exposure for you. Then you have channel settings, which is sort of what we covered before. Um, but there are a few more options. So social links, you can add up to five social links that would appear beside your follow account and name on your main page, on your main account on Twitch. My recommendation would be at least the first link 
should be either your website or your link in bio. If you don't know what I mean, don't feel bad. <laughs> um, by linking by your website, I mean a space online where you have all the list of your links. So if you want to know more about this, let me know in the comments down below and I will make a video about linking bio. While you're done there, don't forget to pop the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Next tab is brand. Here is where you can choose the profile accent color and the profile banner. And here is where you can put your offline banner. It's called video player banner. That's the same. I will recommend to use JPEG or PNG files. So basically pictures because GIF, I've never seen it working. So <laughs> completely up to you if you want to try. And actually, if you succeed, let me know. But I don't know anyone that succeeded using GIFs for their offline banner. Next tab is schedule. You can add a schedule for your live stream. So title category is the game that you're playing. Or if you do just chatting, will be just chatting. You can put the time and the time will be what's your local time. So let's say you want to stream at 10 o'clock in the morning. You put in 10 o'clock and then Twitch automatically will change the time based on the viewer's time zone. So if the viewer time zone is like five time zone ahead of you, and if you're in the US, most likely that would happen. Um, Twitch will show the viewer their time, not your time. So don't worry about it. And then you can choose the frequency. Every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you can have a bit of a schedule on your channel. And that's good because viewers know when to find you and what time to find you. Next tab is feature content. If you do want to use it, use it. I personally don't like it a lot. Um, but because... It allows you to show other people on your channel, but I don't know anybody that actually clicks on the people that are shown on your channel, unless you have more than a few thousands of followers, then maybe, but otherwise I don't know how helpful that is. Now for the drop down again on the left hand side moderation, auto mod updates so you can turn on auto mod it's very very mild so my recommendation will be still to stick to bots external bot service like streamer bot mix it up stream elements and so on and so forth and i will leave everything as default except for block hyperlinks i will turn that on so if someone comes in chat and post or spam a link it won't post it don't worry if you have a bot moderator that you trigger to show your links this will still work because the bot is a moderator if someone is just a viewer and post links twitch will automatically block it because you'll be surprised how many people uh, take advantage of it. Everything else, I will probably almost leave it as it is, except for email verification. I will do email verification. And for the first time chatters, I would say some chatters must have a verified phone number. Just so, and first time chatters on my channel must have a verified phone number. This decreases the chance of getting bots. Scrolling down, I would add some chat rules. For example, be excellent to each other, have fun, whatever you want them to be. Everything else, I will leave it as it is. Next tab on the left hand side is viewer rewards, drops, enable channel drops. Because people, while they watch your stream, they're able to get drops, which is in-game rewards. So turn them straight on. Um, 
it won't get you famous, but it, it will, you know, people will actually pop in for the rewards sometimes. So you may want to keep it on. Then you have rewards, which is the campaigns that Twitch is on at the, at the time. Stream together, it's a great feature. So what it means is you can stream together with other people. So having people like your teammates, right? So you play FPS game like I do. Um, you have your teammates. You can import their camera and have them on your stream while you play your game. Um, so if you have people that are comfortable on camera, they are, they are in your team, this is how you do it. Streaming tools. Uh, this is all the integration that Twitches have. Um, crowd control, if you play one of the games that they support, it's really, really great to use. A, it increased the fun on the live stream because it lets viewers interact with the game that you're playing. It also is a good way for you to monetize as well on the side. Stream elements, yes. And then Throne, uh, you can show your wish list on Throne, the primary feature for Throne. But now you can also show what equipment you're using with Amazon affiliate links which is great. So you, if people decide to buy from that link, you will get a small percentage of what they pay um, and they don't pay anything extra. Extensions. This is the last tab that we're going to cover because everything else is um, Creator Camp and Safety Center. They are just redirection to websites. Extensions are really important because they can increase the fun that the chat is having during your live stream and they are extension that are extension for games so people can interact with your game if you have a particular event that you want to do and you want to put the big uh, schedule and countdown on the first page of your live stream this is how you can do it. You have loyalty and recognition. So what you can do is based on viewers' actions, you can reward them with um, digital or uh, physical um, rewards. And you can assign tasks. They give points and someone has enough points uh, they will get the reward. Then you can have some tools for yourself, some extension of viewer engagement, some of them for music, polling and voting, game extensions. Look, um, I'll keep this short. They're really good. And the one that I would recommend the most, it would be stream stickers right at the bottom here. Crowd control if you use it. Sound alerts, very self-explanatory. Blurb is almost the same as sound alerts uh, and it's pretty good uh, you can have thrown remember i mentioned thrown before in the integrations it does have a extension if you still are confused on what extensions are what i would recommend is just check out get started with extensions if you click on view all on the right hand side it will show you the most used extensions and then just check out all the extensions. So you can see what they do, what they don't do, but so you can see what actually are the best extension for the stream, the, the type of stream that you make. Thank you so much for sticking with me until the end of the video. I'm sure you will like this video next. Until next time, bro mates.